Welcome to this video on using Excel to uh, draw trend lines, uh, best fit lines to graphs. So we're going to be looking at these uh, different features of that. So let's begin. So we have here uh, just an Excel chart. I've seen it in previous videos perhaps. And what I want to do is try and describe these data here with a trend line. So in order to do that, we just, we can, there's two ways of doing it. You can either right click and then add trend line, or if you couldn't get that to work, you can go to design, add chart element, and then a trend line. Now with the trend line, the first option we're faced with is exactly what type of trend line that we want to add. And actually you get a few more options if you go to the right click menu. So if we add the trend line, we get the various options. So first option is the type of trend line. Um, so these are very, most often we're gonna be going for a linear one. We could go for a logarithmic one if we particularly think. But remember, these are linked to the type of relationship we're expecting to see. So if we're not expecting to see uh, a polynomial relationship, there's no point fitting it, even if it looks slightly better. So I would, most of the time, we're going to be sticking with linear. OK, there's a few other options. We can name our trend line if we really want to. Um, we can forecast forward or back, so that's sort of extrapolation. So let's say I wanted to forecast backwards I've currently my minimum mass is three grams let's say I want to forecast backwards three grams then I can go back there to where that trend line is going to cross now sometimes when we're doing these trend lines we recognize that we're actually going to want the origin to appear on our graph so in that case we can tick this set intercept box and then just put that to be zero zero and that will make sure that it forces it through the origin now Next one is just displaying the equation on the graph, so that has put the equation on. Now you will have to then re-click the trend line if you want to play with it again. And now I'm going to actually take the set intercept off and you can see that that's affected the equation of the graph. And the final option here was the displaying the R squared value on the chart. And R squared is simply a measure of how closely correlated these two variables are. It's the square of the product moment correlation coefficient, and it's currently at 0.9982, indicating a very high degree of correlation. But remember, R squared is more sensitive than R, but it doesn't give you the plus or minus aspect to show you whether it's positive or negative correlation. Okay, so now we've got our trend line on there. We might want to do some formatting of it. So a typical way we do anything like that in Excel is we just click on it, right click format trend line and then we've got various options up here and the ones we're probably going to want to go to fill in line obviously we want a line uh, it depends what type we could usually a solid line is what we want you can change the dash type if we just want a straight line that should be fine we can change the width of the line here uh, we can decide to make it an arrow if we really want to uh, but something like this is probably going to be what we want to do okay now uh, the other, final, other thing I want to do in this video is show you how can we get these trend line parameters out. So one way of doing it would be, okay, well, I want the gradient of this line, so I'm just going to copy and paste that onto my sheet. But let's say, for example, we added another data point, and that might slightly change the equation. So we want a way of using these parameters here. And as long as you're using a linear fit here, it is actually possible to use those without even drawing the trend line at all, although we should check that there is actually the relationship there. So the way you do that is if you come across the data here, uh, let's say we want to get the gradient and the y-intercept of these. Then to get the gradient, we're going to use the Excel function slope. So we type equals to start using a formula. And we just do slope. And then it says known y's. So that means we want the uh, dependent variables. So that was the temperature change, comma, known x's. So we just select those. And we're going to get, we close the brackets, we get minus 3.3, which if we look at the chart, was what this would be to 1 dp. And if we want the y-intercept, we're going to do equals intercept. And then again, it's known y's first, so the dependent variable, and then a comma, and then the independent variable. And we just close that. And again, it's minus 0 0.2, which if we look on the chart, was what that would be to 1 dp. Now let's see how the advantage is that with responsiveness let's say for example we do set the intercept to zero now uh, then if we go back to the data we can see that the y-intercept there is still minus 0 0.2 because it is doing the best fit line it's not linked to this what the fit we've done there is it's just what the best fit line by a linear regression model would actually be so just be aware of using the intercept value 
uh, and the gradient unless you're using just the, the normal basic fitting that Excel provides. But that's a useful way, as long as you are happy to do that, to extract these parameters and we could multiply this by 10 or whatever we want to do with it from there because it's now in our formula. Okay, thanks for watching.